Welcome everyone. I hope you all are keeping well and I hope that everyone is benefiting a lot from this holy month um, and especially the series of lectures. Now to start the program, can I invite Brother Rasmin for a recitation of Dua'a? Thank you, Brother. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Allahumma niyaftatu hathana bihamdika wa anta musaddidu al-sawab bimannika وَيَقَنْتُ أَنَّكَ أَنْ تَرْحَمُ الرَّاحِمِينَ فِي مَوْضِعِ الْعَفْوِ وَالرَّحْمَةِ وَأَشَدُّ الْمُعَاقِبِينَ فِي مَوْضِعِ النَّكَالِ وَالنَّقِمَةِ وَأَعْظَمُ الْمُتَجَبِّرِينَ فِي مَوْضِعِ الْكِبْرِيَاءِ وَالْعَظَمَةِ اللهم أذنت لي في دعائك ومسألتك فاسمعوا يا سميعوا متحتي واجبوا يا رحيم دعوتي وأقل يا غفور عثرتي فكم يا إلهي من كربة قد فرشتها وهموم قد كشفتها وعثرة قد أقلتها ورحمة قد نشرتها وحلقة بلاء قد فككتها الحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبة ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الذل وكبره تكبيرا الحمد لله بجميع محامده كلها على جميع نعمه كلها الحمد لله الذي لا شريك له في خلقه ولا شبيه له في عظمته الحمد لله الفاشي في الخلق يمره وحمده الظاهر بالكرم مجده الباسط بالجود يده الذي لا تنقص خزائنه ولا تزيده كثرة العطاء إلا جودا وكرما إنه هو العزيز الوهاب اللهم إني أسلك قليلا من كثير ما حاجة بي لي عظيمة وغناك عنه قديم وهو عندي كثير وهو عليك سهل يسير اللهم إن عفوك عن ذنبي وتجاوزك عن خطيئتي وصفحك عن ظلمي وسترك على قبيح عملي وحلمك عن كثير جرمي عندما كان من خطي وعمدي أطمعني في أن أسألك ما لا أستوجبه منك الذي رزقتني من رحمتك وريتني من قدرتك وعرفتني من إجابتك وصرت أدعوك آمنا وأسألك مستأنسا لا خائفا ولا وجلا مدلا عليك فيما قصدت فيه إليك فإن أبطى عني عتبت بجهلي عليك ولعل الذي أبطى عني هو خير لي لعلمك بعاقبة الأمور فلم أرى مولا كريما أصبر على عبد الليما منك علي يا رب إنك تدعوني فأولي عنك وتتحبب لي فأتبغض إليك وتتودد إلي فلا أقبل منك كأن لي التطول عليك فلم يمنع كذلك من الرحمة لي والإحسان إلي والتفضل علي بجودك وكرمك فرحم فارحم عبدك الجاهل وجد علي بفضل إحسانك إنك جواد كريم الحمد لله مالك الملك وجري الفلك مسخر الرياح فالق الإصباح ديان الدين رب العالمين الحمد لله على حلمه بعد علمه والحمد لله على عفوه بعد قدرته والحمد لله على طول نات في غضبه وهو قادر على ما يريد الحمد لله خالق الخلق باسط الرزق فالق الاصباح للجلال والاكرام والفضل والانعام الذي بعد فلا يرى وقرب فشهد النجوى تبارك وتعالى 
الحمد لله الذي ليس له منازع يعادله ولا شبيه يشاكله ولا ظهير يعاضجه فهرى بعزته الأعزاء وتواضع لعظمته العظماء فبلغ بقدرته ما يشاء الحمد لله الذي يجيبني حين أنادي ويستر علي كل عورة وأنا أعصيه ويعظم النعمة علي فلا أجازيه فكم من موهبة هنية قد أعطاني وعظيمة مخوفة قد كفاني وبحجة مونقة قد أراني وأثني عليه حامدا وأذكره مسبحا الحمد لله الذي لا يهتك حجابه ولا يغلق بابه ولا يرد سائله ولا يخيب وامده الحمد لله الذي يؤمن الخائفين وينجي الصالحين ويرفع المستضعفين ويضع المستكبرين ويهلك ملوكا ويستخلف آخرين الحمد لله قاسم الجبارين مبير الظالمين مدرك الهاربين أكال الظالمين صريخ المستصرخين موضع حاجات الطالبين معتمد المؤمنين الحمد لله الذي من خشيته ترعد السماء وسكانها وترجف الأرض وعمارها وتموج البحار ومن يسبح في غمراتها الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي يخلق ولم يخلق ويرزق ولا يرزق ويطعم ولا يطعم ويميت الأحياء ويحيي الموتى وهو حي لا يموت بيده الخير وهو على كل شيء قدير اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وأمينك وصفيك حبيبك وخيرتك من خلقك وحافظ سرك وملغ رسالاتك أفضل وأحسن وأجمل وأكمل وأسكى وأنماء وأطيب وأطهر وأسنى وأكثر ما صليت وباركت وترحمت وتحننت وسلمت على أحد من عبادك وأنبيائك ورسلك وصفوتك وأهل الكرامة عليك من خلقك اللهم وصل على علي أمير المؤمنين ووصي رسول رب العالمين عبدك ووليك وأخي رسولك وحجتك على خلقك وآيتك الكبرى والنبأ العظيم وصل على الصديقة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وصل على صبط الرحمة وإمام الهدى الحسن والحسين سيد شباب أهل الجنة صل على أمة المسلمين علي بن الحسين زين العابدين ومحمد بن علي الباقر وجعفر بن محمد الصادق وموسى بن جعفر الكاظم وعلي بن موسى الرضا ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والخلف الهادي المهدي جزاك جزاك على عبادك وامنائك في بلادك صلاه كثيره دائمه اللهم صل على ولي امرك القائم المؤمل والعدل المنتظر وحفه بملائكتك المقربين ويدو بروح القدس يا رب العالمين اللهم اجعله الداعي إلى كتابك والقائم بدينك استخلف في الأرض كما استخلفت الذين من قبله مكن له دينه الذي ارتضيته له أبدل من بعد خوفي أمنا يعبدك لا يشرك بك شيء اللهم عزه وعزز به وانصره وانتصر به وانصر نصرا عزيزا وافتح له فتحا يسيرا واجعل له من لدنك سلطانا نصيرا 
اللهم اظهر به دينك وسنة نبيك حتى لا يستخفي بشيء من الحق مخافة أحدا من الخلق اللهم أنا نرغب إليك في دولة كريمة تعز بها الإسلام وأهله وتذل بها النفاق وأهله وتجعلنا فيها من الدعاة إلى طاعتك والقادة إلى سبيلك وترزقنا بها كرامة الدنيا والآخرة اللهم ما عرفتنا من الحق فحملناه وما قصرنا عنه فبلغناه اللهم المن به شعثنا واشعب به صدعنا وارتق به فتقنا وكثر به قلتنا وعزز به ذلتنا واغني به عائننا واقض به عن مغرمنا واجبر به فقرنا وسد به خلتنا ويسر به عسرنا وبيض به وجوهنا وفك به أسرنا وانجح به طلبتنا وانجز به مواعيدنا واستجب به دعوتنا واعطنا به سؤنا وبلغنا من به من الدنيا والآخرة أمالنا واعطنا به فوق رغبتنا يا خير المسؤولين ووسع المعطين في به صدورنا وذب به غيظ قلوبنا واهدنا به لما اختلف فيه من الحق بإذنك إنك تهدي من تشاء إلى صراط مستقيم انصرنا به على عدوك وعدونا إله الحق آمين اللهم إنا نشكو إليك فقد نبينا صلواتك عليه وآله وغيبة ولينا وكثرة عدونا وقلة عددنا وشدة الفتن بنا وتظاهر الزمان علينا صل على محمد وآل محمد وأن على ذلك بفتح منك تعجله وبضر تكشف ونصر تعزه وسلطان حق تضر ورحمة منك تجلنا وعافية منك تلبسناها ورحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد جزاك الله برضه راسم for the very beautiful recitation um, so before um, I invite Aga, I'd like to say a few words um, from the previous lecture. So first of all, the memorization ayah, it's the 12th one, um, and it is Surah Zumar, verse 53. So that's Surah number 39, verse 53. Um, Aga talked about many things we do in our daily life, for example, make excuses for our own sins, um, and we learned so many lessons from our betterment from the ayahs Aga discussed. Um, I'll just say the translation of Surah Zumar, verse 53. And it is, say that Allah declares, O my servants who have committed excuses against their own souls, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah will forgive all sins. Indeed, he is all forgiving and all merciful. Um, so uh, I'll just talk about two days ago as well. Um, so um, at the 25th of April, Allah talked about that you can be rich, you can um, have big houses, you can, uh, the Quran doesn't tell us that we should um, not be rich, but it tells us that we shouldn't be attached to the materialistic things. Um, so, and having a connection with it. So there's a difference between having it and then having a connection with it. So loving it. Um, so the 25th, so that's two days ago. That was Surah Maida, so that's Surah number five and verse 119. And that was the 11th one. Um, and Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that the worth of the actions will be based on the niyyah um, and that the key away from shaitan and close to Allah is working with sincerity. And then he also talked about that shaitan is an enemy with a game plan ready. And Imam Ali al-Islam said that shaitan makes his way much easier for you. Any religion which is not for you, he wants to dissolve for you one step at a time. So very slowly. And he will cause this unity between you guys. So he's talking about us Muslims. And he um and with the splitting of the community, the fitna comes. So therefore, and then Imam al Islam is advising us, he's saying, be careful. And so just quickly, I'll just say that the the memorization number I said eleven and then ten. So memorization number nine is 
uh, Surah Nisa, so that's Surah 4 and verse 76. Uh, and then Allah warns us in the Quran that Shaitan will quote Surah Ibrahim, verse 22, and he will say, Allah promised you a true promise, and I also made you a promise too, but I broke my promise. So therefore, don't blame me, but blame yourselves. Um, so with that, I would like to invite Allah. Um, if anyone has any questions, then please type them in chat, or um, you can raise your hand and you can simply um, ask Allah. So please welcome Allah with a loud salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Yuhi wa alwahu alamin al-fidah. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassid li amri wa ahlu al-uqdatan min lisani yafqahu khawli. Dear brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope all of you are doing well, inshallah. Um, since we're getting closer to the end of our talks, um, unfortunately, um, for myself, but fortunately for you guys, I'm not going to be um, taking more of your time, inshallah, won't be boring you too much. Um, sorry, just give me one second. Um, so, but the reality is today is essentially pretty much our last day because tomorrow we'll be, uh, we'll be commemorating the Milad and then um, if possible I'll, I'll try to incorporate a verse of the Quran there as well but other than that inshallah tonight will be the last, last uh, program in that sense. Um, so because of that what I would like to do today is if there's any questions, I'll start off with that. And again, usually what I like to suggest is that we stick to the questions that are somewhat related to what we've talked about. If there's any of those, then um, I'm, I'm available. So I'll, I'll wait a few minutes to see if there's any questions about anything, anything that we talked about. What's the best way to contemplate? That's actually a really, really, really good question. And it's a, it's a question of, you know, uh, you can tell that it's someone who's, um, who's, who's at least taking a step towards where they need to go. So the best way to contemplate, there's, there's various things, right? There's various things. Um, one of the examples that I'd given on that day was about Do you guys remember that? And then we said that it is only you who we worship and it's only you who we seek help from. And then we said, okay, let me look through my life. Do I actually only seek help from him or do I depend on others as well? Or um, is it only who, he who I worship or is it I listen to other things as well, or I submit to other things as well, whether it's the norms of the society, whether it's my own personal, um, you know, personal desires, and so on and so forth. So basically, in, 
so that's one example of how to contemplate. But, and of course, the more a person's knowledge uh, gets, the deeper their contemplation will be. But what we all know, what we all know, um, that we, have, we all have enough information where we can put those little bas basic building blocks together and be able to conclude things. And not only conclude things, but also be able to check myself if I'm, if I'm living the life where I live according to those conclusions. So for example, this one, right? It is only you who I worship. I'm saying that in, in namaz every day. Um, the purpose of my creation is So that's good. It's aligned with my purpose. My purpose is uh, to worship Allah. I'm telling it, only you I worship. So that's good. That's really good. Um, I know that there is a verse that says, Have you seen the ones who have taken their own kind of desires as their Lord? Am I someone who takes my own carnal desires as my Lord or not? If I'm saying one thing and doing another thing, would I be included amongst the people of the verse where it says, قَالَ اللَّهُ هَذَا يَوْمٌ يَنْفَعُ الصَّادِقِينَ صِدْقُهُمْ Am I sincere? Or is there a discrepancy? If there's a discrepancy, then is that hypocrisy? See, nothing I've said in, this, in these past few sentences is something that you haven't heard of, right? And the, the, especially over now, now that we've discussed those three, four verses that I mentioned, but even if we didn't mention those verses, you know that we're supposed to worship Allah. You know that we, we say that we worship only you, Allah, during our salah. But do I actually only worship Allah or not? And if I don't, then there's a discrepancy between what I see and what I do. Does that make me a hypocrite? Is hypocrisy something good? If I'm okay with my hypocrisy, then I should I be pointing out other people's hypocrisies? If I'm someone who says that I would like to uh, get closer to Allah, but I don't really give him points to my hypocrisy, can, can those two come together at once? Th these are the kind of things that you know, we have these basic, what I like to call the basic building blocks. I know hypocrisy is bad. I know I need to worship Allah. I know I sometimes worship other than Allah. Um, you know, the meaning of worship other than Allah, meaning I submit to that. So therefore you put these basic building blocks together. I say this and I do this, therefore there's some hint of hypocrisy in me, but I know hypocrisy is bad, therefore I know there's something that I need to fix. These kind of things. Or I go to the graveyard. Again, example that we talked about. I go to the graveyard. I know that this is where everyone's going to go. Kullu nafsin maut. Every nafs will taste death. But yet, when, when I go there and yeah, I get sh a little shaken up and I realize, oh my God, you know, no matter how big my house is, no matter how much fame I have, no matter if I'm rich or poor, no matter, no matter what, everyone ends up right here. That shakes me up, but then, you know, next day I wake up and it's completely normal. So that means I'm, I'm forgetting that contemplation that should be there on a more regular basis. That listen, your time in this world is temporary. You're not here forever. So these are different things that um, when I say contemplate, this is what I mean, at least at our level. And then once people start getting higher and higher in their levels and they start understanding Allah better, then obviously their contemplation will be even better. Another very good way to be able to um, build those basic building blocks for me to be able to start contemplating is through the du'as and the Qur'an. So the du'as of, of the, that are narrated through the Imams alayhi wasalam or the Qur'an, the verses of the Qur'an, these give me, uh, you know, little basic building blocks of like facts. Fact is, there is Allah. Fact is, there is one God. Fact is, um, you have to be 
uh, sincere. Fact is, and so on and so forth. And then I reflect upon myself and my life and see, you know, is this something that you can, can I see that in my life or not? Another example is uh, different things like, okay, I rely on my actions. If I don't do a good action, then I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm kind of bugged about it. I'm annoyed about it, but I feel like it's just me. Meaning that I am the one who controls everything. Not realizing that, for example, this law Abu Hamza al-Samali, which is highly recommended to be recited through, throughout the holy month. Um, if you read like a good part of that, and it's a pretty long du'a, it's like you know several times longer than du'a kumel. Um, you see this theme in there, repeated theme that where the imam keeps saying that Allah, I have mistakes, and you give me nothing but blessing, nothing but good comes down from you, and nothing but bad goes up from me to you. You give me good, I give you bad. Oh Allah, for some reason, I still have hope though. So I admit my mistake, but I decide I have hope. What do I have hope in? I don't have hope in my own actions, oh Allah, but I have hope in your mercy because your mercy is all encompassing. See, so this is when someone starts and getting, get, starts getting used to these du'as from their moms, their, their mindset starts changing and they start realizing, wait, what their mom is trying to teach me is I don't have to rely on my actions only. There is a God who plays an important factor. Yes, I need to do actions. But uh, you know how we talked about like the knee of the actions, the intention of the actions. That's what gives it actual worth. Half, what, what do you, not even half. Most of the time that I stand up uh, for prayer, I'm not, um, I'm not even thinking about God. So how, how, how worthy is that salat of mine? Yes, it's taking care of my responsibilities. Not to say, God forbid, that, you know, if I, that I need to go pray it again. No, you don't need to pray it again. Because the fiqhi rulings, the jurisprudential rulings say that once you've done wudu, stood up, done the four rakats, you're good, you're good to go. But the value of that salat comes with understanding. So these, these are important things. I hope that answers that contemplation question. Next one. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. I have a question. One day you said that shaitan won't leave us. Does that mean that shaitan does not leave imams and prophets as well? Um, with imams and prophets, it's it's a little different. Why is it a little different? Um, because they are somewhat protected, somewhat. Don't misquote me. Somewhat protected by the infallibility that Allah has also bestowed upon them as a mercy. Okay. But, but, does that mean that shaitan um, doesn't try or would not try? I don't think so. Like, for example, look, let's look at the example, right? You said, um, you, you just said imams and prophet, but let's look at the other prophet. Like, for example, uh, prophet Adam. Right? Was there a shaitan involved? I'm not saying did he sin or not sin. I'm not having that conversation right now. That's also a conversation to be had. But was there a shaitan involved in the equation? Yes, there was. Yes, there was. Although, yes, the Holy Prophet وسلم, is at a higher level. The Imams are also at a high level. Right? So I'm not saying that they can, that shaitan can get into them. No, they're infallible. But does that mean that he gives up or he wouldn't be there trying? I would think that he'd be there trying. Can you differentiate between reading the translation of the verses of the Quran and contemplating on them? Um, I hope this uh, previous, um, what is it, the previous explanation that we just gave about contemplation, I hope that answered this question as well where you're asking between the differentiation, differentiate between reading the translation. And um, so I hope that's taken uh, care of. I think that takes care of all the questions. Uh, okay. Okay, so let's start. If there's nothing else, let's start. Ali, do you have any questions? Anything you wanna 
No, you're good to go. Okay, that's fine. No question. Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وآله الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وآله الطاهرين. So the thing, the thing that I would like to talk about today is one of those most important. So we've talked about a lot of things. We talked about different things that will help you. Get closer to Allah. We talked about different things that are important for us to get closer to Allah. We talked about different things that can become barriers in our per- pursuit or in our journey towards Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So various things. Um, one of those underlying things. One of those underlying things where I do everything that I can. So say for example, you have a test coming up, right? You have an exam coming up for school, and you. You know, someone might be okay. You know, exams tomorrow. I'm just going to start studying today, and I'll study, and I'll go, and I'll see what happens. There, there's people like that. You know, they kind of like very minimal effort, kind of. Then there's people who know they. So I'll talk about the other almost extreme, where like two weeks, a month ahead of their exams, depending on what exam it is, they have a schedule, and they're going to start preparing for this exam like weeks ahead of time. Weeks ahead of time, so these are two different types of people. But what I want to talk about is something even other than that. So the person number two is is better in many ways, where they're more organized. They they plan things out. They give everything its time. It's much better than just kind of being last minute and unprepared and you know just running around. So that being more organized, of course, has its benefits, no doubt. But both of these people. Say, for example, fail their exams. Okay. The one who doesn't prepare says, you know, I don't know. Somehow I got through every single time, but the amount of effort I put in, I guess I deserve to fail. And they kind of come to terms with it. The other person says, I can't believe it. It's like I did everything that I was supposed to do. Everything, I practiced. I studied. I asked the teacher. I did this. I did that. I did practice tests. Everything. Yet I failed. I don't know what happened. Next time, I guess instead of two weeks at a time, I'm going to start four weeks at a time. Notice how in their thinking process, there's only an I involved. There's only an I involved, and there is no. Um, Importance, or uh, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala is not being given, uh, is not a factor in their equation. It's not a factor in their mindset. And one of the things that's underlined, even and this applies within religion as well. So even if you're someone who you know prays and fasts and donates and works for the community and this and that and all of that. And then, if a person thinks, okay, you know, I've done quite a bit. I'm like I'm putting in a lot of effort, that, so I'm good. Again, this is only an equation that has I, my effort, I tried, I did this, I, I, I. Whereas that underlying thing, that is absolutely essential for a moment to have, is that they have Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as part of their equation. And always part of their equation. That's where the importance of du'a comes in. The importance of du'a. One important. So, Alhamdulillah, in our communities, you know, du'a has gained more importance, has gained traction. But let me let me talk about the two most common ways how we approach du'a in our understanding, average understanding. One is, you know, you pray and you're like, oh. Oh God, please, you know, um, I have a test tomorrow. Please make me pass my test. Oh God, um, I have a job interview. Please make me do well in this job interview. Oh God, I my my so and so is sick. Please make them feel better. Oh, so it's just very short, like you know, checklist. This is what I have. This is what I need. This is what I have. This is what I need. This is what I have. This is what I need. That's one approach. The other approach is. We're reciting the du'a, so we're reciting du'a kumel, for example, that asks about deeper things. We're reciting, for example, Joshim Kabir, which asks about deeper things. We're reciting 
uh, Dua Abu Hamza Samadi, which is asking about deeper things. But what happens, and, and maybe I, I hope I can get some feedback from uh, you guys as well. What happens typically in communities, we concentrate on the recitation of the Dua. Recitation, recite the Dua. So recitation means two things. One, that it's, you know, it's, uh, it's done in a beautiful voice, so it's attractive. Other is, it's done with a proper pronunciation, so it, you know, it's Arabic. And that's about it. So everyone's reading Dua Kumel, but we're just reading the Dua Kumel. Du'as are not supposed to be, not meant to be read. Du'a is not meant to be recited. Du'a is meant to be made. You make du'a or you supplicate. And embedded in there, in that concept of making du'a, embedded in there, which you can't separate from that meaning, is realizing that the entity that I'm talking to is a higher being and I'm a lower being. So that humility, that humbleness, that, um, that distress, that overwhelm, or overwhelming factor, all of those should be embedded in the dua. So when I say, Allahumma ghfir li adhunub allati tahtiku al-isam, you know, dua kuma. Usually it's, you know, it's just about, it's just about how beautifully it's recited. So like, you know, it has to be recited in a beautiful way. Let's play, or if we don't have someone in our community, let's play this reciter, let's play that reciter. But what about understanding the dua? Can anyone make a dua until they understand the dua? How can you ask Allah SWT for something when you don't know what you're saying? So that's step number one. But step number two, like, Okay, Allahumma ghfir li adhunub allati tahtiku al-isam. Okay. Allahumma ghfir li adhunub allati tunzilu al-bala. Okay. And so on and so forth. I, and some people might say, oh, I actually know what it means. Oh, Allah forgive me the sins that become a reason for your bala to descend upon me. Yeah, I know what it means. Oh, Allah forgive me the sins that uh, break my my isma or my sort of that protection around me. Okay, I know what it means. It's okay if you know the translation, but there's more to that. If it, do I understand the importance of being protected from Allah's bala? Do I understand the importance of being able to protect this isma of mine? Isma meaning like some sort of a protection around me that protects me, that guides me. If I don't have these, do I realize where my life would lead to. And to highlight my point, let me let me quote this verse. And it's a verse. Okay, Ali, I'm gonna put you on the spot now, okay? You ready for this? In the communities, when they say, okay, someone is sick, please recite this verse five times or seven times. What verse is it? It's, um... Uh, there you go. I knew you know it. That's why I put you on the spot. How many people, or you, you can put your hands up, and if it's echoing, you can just put your hands up and tell me. Or you can even type it out. How, how many percent of the people do you think know what that verse means? I don't know. Just give it a shot. Um, it's okay. It's okay. Just type it out. How many people know this verse? What percent? What percent of, say, for example, I don't know, the people who come to Azakhana, you think know what it means? Um, Do you think most people know? Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Here's the important thing, right? If whether, I mean, it doesn't matter if Azahana, they know or they don't know, but generally I feel like most people don't. It's just, you know, it's like one of those checklist things. Oh, please, brother so-and-so is sick, please recite 
five times. And that's it. It's like reciting the verse again. Whereas if you look at the verse, you'll see that aspect in there. It says, Oh, the one who answers. He answers who? The distressed. When the distressed calls out to him, and he takes away and relieves him from, from, the, from the thing that was causing the distress. So you see that importance, even in that verse, the importance of distress. Do I have distress with regards to where I am in life right now? And it's very, very difficult to be distressed about something that I don't really understand. If I don't really understand what, what this life being temporary means, if I don't really understand what it means, that whoever does even a bit of wrong will see it. If that doesn't cause distress in my life, that means I haven't understood what it means. The verse is saying, Amma yujibul mutarra, the one who had istirar, the one who had mutar. That's the one that Allah answers. And we're sitting here just reciting duas. You know, the most beautiful of the voice is the one who's going to recite the most beautiful. It's just we, we've sold ourselves short of what the du'a was supposed to be. So that, that is something that really, that's really important with regards to, the, with regards to um, what the concept of du'a is. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 186. So basically, we, we're not going to have any more um, memorization verses from today because the youth who are participating, inshallah, um, have already started preparing and tomorrow we're going to do a little quiz for them, not during the program and inshallah we'll announce the um, the names of the youth during the program tomorrow. tomorrow. So there, there's no more verses for memorizing, but take the references down. It's good. It's good. It'll be useful in the future. Surah Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 186. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي عَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ and if my servant asks you about me, tell them, tell them that certainly I'm right there. Qareeb, I'm right next to you. That I answer the call of whoever calls out to me. Allah is telling you and I that listen, I'm here right next to you. And I will answer your du'as. I'm right there. فَلْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي And then the verse goes on. So therefore come. Do we, do we know? Do we remind ourselves that Allah is there listening to me, right next to me, always ready to answer? Uh, in Surah Ghafir, chapter 40, verse 60. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell them. Tell them to call out to me. Tell them to make dua to me. Tell them to look for me. أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ I will be right there. I'll answer back. But if you're reciting dua kumal without understanding what you're saying, if you're reciting Dua Kumail and just focusing on the beauty of the voice, what is God going to call out? Like, what is he going to answer? I'm not even making a Dua for him to answer. There is no distress in my voice. It, I, I don't seem, I don't come off as someone who, who needs stuff. Because I'm just, I'm just there. I'm just reciting the Dua. I can recite the most difficult parts of du'a. I can recite the most difficult verses of the Quran without, without having any sort of uh, reaction to it. 
Like when we say Maliki Yawm din in Surah Ham, that this is the master of the day of judgment. But I stand there as if, okay, so what? So what if he's the master? No, he's the master of his own day of judgment. Nothing to do with me. And don't include me amongst those who you are upset with. But I just stand there in the mouth as if, okay, so what if he's upset with me? So what? It's not like he gave me any blessings. It's not like he controls my entire destiny. It's not like he controls my existence. It's not like he controls my life and my hereafter. These are signs of lack of understanding, lack of ma'rifa of the reality. These are signs. And yes, it's overwhelming sometimes. But Allah doesn't expect us to be Amir al-Mu'mineen overnight. What he expects us is to set a standard and then slowly start taking baby steps towards that. That is something that he does expect of you and I. He does expect you and I to do that. Imam Sadiq says, what was, the, what was the purpose that we said of our creation? That I did not create the jinn or the ins, the jinn and the humans, except for them to worship. Right? Worship. And uh, if you look at that purpose in other terminology, it'll say gaining proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, getting closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In even higher, uh, maybe terminology, become manifestations of the uh, of the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What that means is Allah is Rahim, I slowly start becoming Rahim. If Allah is Rahman, I slowly start becoming Rahman. If Allah is Alim, I slowly start gaining knowledge. If Allah is Kareem, I slowly start becoming Kareem. If Allah is Ghafoor, I slowly start forg forgiving people as well. And so on and so forth. That slowly my akhlaq and my attributes start moving in a direction where I'm getting closer and closer to Allah and becoming a manifestation of his attributes to a certain degree, of course limited. So this is what, what my, my purpose and your purpose is. Imam Sadiq says, Alaykum bid dua. He's saying, dua is obligatory upon you. Alaykum bid dua. Don't ever take it lightly. Why, O oh Imam? فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَقَرَّبُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ Because you don't get closer to Allah with anything like you can get close to Him with dua. That makes sense too. If, I, if I'm talking to Allah in the dua, if I'm creating a relationship with Allah in the dua, if I'm expressing the reality of me being a nothing, and him being everything in the du'a. This, this, this is exactly what the purpose of this existence is. That is the understanding that you and I are supposed to be able to reach. That we are dependent on him. Everything that I have, that even my good actions are from him. He's the one who inspired me. He's the one who gave me the tools to be able to gain the knowledge. He's the one, he's the one, he's the one. Everything roots from him. Alaykum bid dua. Dua is obligatory upon you. فَإِنَّكُمْ لَا تَقَرَّبُونَ بِمِثْلِهِ Because you don't get closer to Allah with anything else the way you do with this. And then it says, وَلَا تَتْرُكُوا صَغِيرَةً لِسِغَرِهَا And don't leave your small duas because they're, oh, you know, I don't want to waste Allah's time with the small ones. No, it's not like that. And then it continues, إِنَّ sahib al poor sahib al kibar It's the same, same source. The big things, the small things, all come from him. And he's told you to come. And as in some du'as it says, oh Allah, can you imagine that you told me to come to make du'a? Right? The verse that we just looked at, 
call out to me, pray to me, make dua to me. And in some of the duas it says that I can't imagine that you told me to come do dua to you and then you not accept my dua. And then you not listen to my dua. It says that's impossible for me to imagine. So it says, Inna sahib al-sighar, huwa sahib al-kibar, the same entity who's giving you the big du'as is the same one who's going to give you the big and small ones as well. It's the same one. Some of the, um, there's some recommendations with regards to what to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So to clarify, if we have any material needs, we ask Allah. If we have any spiritual needs, we ask Allah. If we have any needs, we ask Allah. But there are some recommendations though. There are some recommendations. In one of the hadiths it says, فَلْتَكُنْ مَسْأَلَةُ فِي مَا يَبْقَ لَكَ جَمَالُ Right? And uh, And then he says So basically he's saying So if you're going to ask Allah Then ask him for something That's going to That's going to stay with you The beauty of that thing The pleasure of that thing The, the advantage of that thing Stays with you if you're going to go and ask Allah, ask for something that's going to stay with you. And then it goes on further in the hadith and it says, and the man, and these material things, the money, these things aren't going to stay with you. Again, I've already clarified that if we want to ask for material things, we should not go anywhere except to Allah's door. But take it a level higher. What are the most important things? What is what aligns with my purpose of life better? That is what I should be asking Allah Subhanahu wa Taala for. There's uh, we don't have uh, that much time to go into the details, but there's there's in a hadith talking about the things that become barriers for our du'as to be accepted. One of the things that is repeated over and over is. Um, is eating income or getting income that is not halal. So if I get my source of money is, is a source that is haram, God forbid someone sells alcohol. God forbid someone does something else that's haram. And that is how they generate their income. A person like this, the hadith is saying, that don't expect your du'as to be answered. Because making dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is as if you, you're becoming friends with Him. It's as if you want to communicate with Him. It's as if you want to get close to Him. But a person who knowingly commits sins, a person who knowingly fills their bellies with haram or fire, as some of the verses of the Quran say, a person like this can't get close to God. A person like this has no uh, um, expectation of getting close to God and his du'as being answered. Yes, there's always the door of, of Tawbah that's always open for us. But I can't openly keep rejecting Allah and then expect Him to um, answer all my du'as. In one of the hadith from Imam al kadim alayhi salatu wasalam, they, you know, they went to him and they said, Imam, the Qur'an says, Ud'uni astajib lakum. Call out to me, pray to me, and I will answer your du'as. In the Qur'an, it keeps saying that. But my du'as don't get answered. What's, what's going on? Imam Qadim alayhi salatu wasalam, he says, لَأَنَّكُمْ تَدْعُونَ مَنْ لَا تَعْرِفُونَ Because you pray to someone who you have no ma'rifah of, who you do not know. And basically what that is, is, uh, is implying is that you don't have a relationship with him. 
You don't understand the reality of him. That's why when you ask him, you just ask him as if, you know, you're just casually standing there. Like, well, no, I have this need. I, you know, I'm, uh, someone's sick. Please make them okay. Okay, this is what I need. Please give me this. I need a job. Give me a job. I need, um, I need to win this, I don't know, football match. Please help me win this football match. Oh Allah, please, I'm, I'm, I'm playing this online video game tournament. Please, oh Allah, please make me win this tournament. Oh Allah, make my football club win this game tomorrow. I don't know, what, is, what, what are we making was for? Where is this connection to God coming from? Is there a connection to God? No, it's not. It's just we're stuck in this world and sometimes we don't know who we're talking to. And that is what Imam al-Qadr is saying. He's like, the reason that it's not answered, you don't even know this person. You don't even know this entity that you're praying to. You have no relationship with them. How do you expect for everything to just go smoothly? One of the philosophies of dua, one of the philosophies of dua, the deeper philosophies of dua is that it gives you hope. You know, just like we said that all our shortcomings, all we know what things we need, we know what direction we need to go in, we have all the tools, yet we sometimes slip. Yet we sometimes slip. Therefore, there is Toba. I try my best, all my tools are there, and I try my best, but somehow I can't get over the hump. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Because there's always the heart. There's always the heart. And it's 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 this hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. For us not to lose hope, for us not to think this is impossible for me to be able to achieve this. No, it's not impossible. Because Allah is giving you that extra bonus. And in the tradition it says that الدعاء سلاح المؤمن It's the weaponry of the mu'min. In this, in, this, uh, in this place that they live in, there's forces against them, there's this, there's that. In that sort of a world where there are forces working against you, the weaponry of a mu'min, the thing that's going to get you through, the thing that's going to help you through is your du'a. Du'a silah al mu'min. And in another hadith it says, Ni'ma silah al du'a. That the best of the weaponry is the du'a. I just need to start learning how to use it properly. I need to start using, uh, start learning how to use it properly. It's there. It's there. And what about um, what about someone who doesn't feel like they want to make du'a? The answer is given in the verse that we talked about. Surah Ghafir, chapter 40, verse 60. وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْهُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And your Lord said, call out to me, I will answer you. And then it continues. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي But those who do uh, are too proud, too proud to pray to me, too proud to call out to me, too proud to worship me. Sayyidhuluna jahannama dakhirin. That such people, you think you're so good that you don't need to pray to me? You think you're so good that you don't need to do dua to me? Anyone who turns away from me and dua and my worship because, because of their pride, they will enter the hellfire. Sayyidhuluna. Jahannama Dakhirin in a most um, in a way they where they're humiliated in the worst way possible they were so not just go to hell far. So again, we again the same concept highlighted that listen, it's okay if you make mistakes, but rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
not giving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any points, not giving the dua any points, not giving the salat any points. These kind of things reflect that this person's ma'rifah, this person's understanding of the entire system is still lacking, it's still not quite there. Still not quite there. And therefore, they're not able to benefit from this um, uh, from this beautiful concept, from be this beautiful um, blessing that's been given to us of, of, uh, of the dua. Some of the etiquettes, one last thing, and then I'll stop, but I don't want to go over time. But some of the things, etiquettes for our duas to be answered from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. لَيْسَ أَسْرَعَ إِجَابَةً مِنْ دَعْوَةِ غَائِبْ لِغَائِبْ There is nothing that is quicker to be answered other than the dua of a brother or a sister for someone who's not there. Meaning that I don't have to show them, okay, Ali, I'm praying for you now. Okay, Ali, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your family. I'm praying for your family. No, when Ali's not there, I'm still praying for him. And I'm not just praying for him, oh, Allah, help Ali out and, you know, uh, make him pass his test and make him... No, like, with distress, with passion, that, oh, Allah, this brother, you know, he puts in effort. Please, please, please help him out. Help him be better. He's already putting so much effort. Oh, Allah, help him be better. Oh, Allah, make him better than me, for example. Oh, Allah, increase his knowledge. Oh, Allah, increase his tawfiqat. Oh, Allah, give him the tawfiq to be able to do the things that will bring him closer to you. These kind of du'as. Where, where I understand it's deep. It's coming from the heart. Why is it the case that we have stories about our imams crying all night long? It's not because they just liked to cry. It's because they understood the magnitude, the, 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 the greatness of the master that they're standing in front of. They understand the lowliness of a human being in front of their master. Remember we talked about one of the verses where it said that um, when, when uh, Allah is, is remembered or when Allah is discussed or when Allah is brought up, that the hearts tremble, these are the signs of a mu'min. So the Quran is saying their hearts tremble when Allah is mentioned. Their iman increases when his verses are recited. And then there's me, the other end of the spectrum. Forget his name being mentioned. I'm standing in front of him. What? Trembling. There's no trembling going on here. I'm perfectly fine. I'm thinking about everything else in the world. It's a sign. It's a reflection of my lack of ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It, it puts a, it's a red flag for me that, listen, you think you've done a lot, but there's a long, long, long way to go long way to go so don't waste time and start moving start begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala start making the du'as that need to be made start connecting with Allah through the du'as and sometimes as um, Ayatollah Khamenei the leader Hafizahullah may Allah protect him he says that sometimes the du'a the purpose of the du'a is not even because you need something. You, you don't want to ask for anything. It's just that the du'a itself is a means of getting close to Allah. It's like, for example, you know, there's some friends who, who would call up Ali and they're like, um, Salaam Ali, are you there? How's it going? And you know from the moment you see their name on your phone that, you know, this person must need something. This person doesn't call me just like that. They must need something. And you're already thinking they must need something. They must need something. Okay, yeah, cut it short. Tell me what you need. Tell me what you need from me. 
But then there's some people who will call you and they'll just call you because they just like to talk to you. They just like to talk to you. Dua is just like that. It doesn't always have to be the case. There's nothing wrong. Again, please don't misunderstand. There's nothing wrong. If you want to ask anyone for anything, it is Allah. But my point is, it doesn't always have to be the case. But the only reason I make dua is when I need something. I can make dua just to get closer to Allah SWT, just to create that relationship with Allah SWT. And these munajat, these 15 whispered prayers that have been narrated through Imam al-Sajjad, there's absolutely nothing better than those. I guess I shouldn't say absolutely nothing better than those. It's very... Uh, <laughs> blanket statement, but you know, verses of the Quran are good, but du'as, and these are some of the most beautiful du'as, and there's 15 du'as, one for each mood. If you're feeling grateful, there's a du'a for the grateful people. If you're feeling uh, full of love for Allah, there's a du'a for the full of love of Allah. If you are remembering Allah, there's a manajat of bakirin. If you feel like overwhelmed by your sins and you want to um, um, seek forgiveness, there's a manajat of ta'idin. Ilahi al basatni al khataya libas madalati wa jalalani al tabaadu min kamaskanati wa amata qalbi adim jinayati fa ahyihi bi tawbatin minka. This goes on and on and on and on. And it's a beautiful, next level stuff. He's saying that this, this villa that I have, this, this, this status that I have, Allah, it's because my mistake, al basatni al khataya libas madallati, this madallat that I have, this zillat that I have. It's because of my own mistakes. My own mistakes have covered me in a clothing of this villa. And then the third line, وَأَمَاتَ قَلْبِي عَظِيمُ الْجِنَايَةِ And these, these great mistakes of mine, these great transgressions of mine have killed my heart. أَمَاتَ قَلْبِي عَظِيمُ الْجِنَايَةِ Ya Ilahi so, so give it life again. Give my heart that my shortcomings, my transgression, the heart that is killed. Give it life again, O oh Allah. All oh my everything, all oh what I hope for. Oh, this is it's like this, like amazingly full of love for the beloved. Give life to my heart again. By accepting my tawbah, O oh Allah, give me a way to get closer to you. Give me a way to get closer to you. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of these blessed nights, for the sake of these blessed nights, O oh Allah, give us the tawfiq to be able to make dua to you. We ask to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, give us the tawfiq to be able to create this relationship with these beautiful duas that have been narrated through the Imams alayhi salam, oh Allah, we ask you for the sake of these nights, give us the tawfiq to be able to seek repentance from you and please forgive us our sins, the sins of our parents, the sins of all the mu'mineen. Oh Allah, we ask you to hasten the reappearance of our Imam and include us amongst his sincere, sincerest followers, oh Allah. Um, at the end, I would like to, there might not be time tomorrow, uh, I'd like to thank all of you um, for taking out time, uh, it was a pleasure for me to be with uh, you know, this entire uh, group. Uh, special thanks to the organizers and special thanks to Brother Daniel and Abi for taking the time out and uh, um, hosting these shows. Really appreciate it. All the elders who are uh, guiding them, helping them, thank you very much as well for all your time. I apologize. Uh, for any of my shortcomings, please do forgive me if I have any shortcomings, and I'm sure I do have many. Um, and I hope that next time that I'm, uh, I see you, see you guys, it's in person because um, it's just not the same <laughs> to just see your names on uh, Zoom window. But inshallah, may Allah give us all the tawfiq, may inshallah give us the tawfiq to be able to 
together as a community, together as a ummah, um, move towards him. May Allah especially give us the tawfiq to be able to create a relationship with the Quran. And I assure you, assure you, the, the dear youth, brothers and sisters who uh, took out the effort of being able, of wanting to memorize these verses, I assure you that inshallah, this will be a first step, uh, a step that will be filled with barakah uh, for you to be able to, inshallah, further strengthen your relationship with the Quran. I really, really pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that that is the case. And inshallah, may he make us of the people who are able to take the Quran as a book of guidance. And when on the last day, the Prophet com complains, وَقَالَ الرَّسُولِ يَا رَبِّي uh, إِنَّا قَوْمِي اِتَّخَذُوا هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ مَهْجُورَ That, oh my Lord, my people, my ummah did not give him points to this Quran, this verse of the Quran. That inshallah, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the sake of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, for the sake of, of his grace and his rahmah and his fadl, that do not include us amongst those people as well, amongst those people of Allah. Give us the ability to be able to uh, create a relationship with the Quran and inshallah benefit from it. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much, Aga, for such an amazing and eye opening lecture, as all of the lectures were so far. Um, and I hope we all learned so much from it. Personally, I learned so much. Like, I'd like to thank you for um, all of the lovely lectures. Um, like I said, I've learned so much from these lectures. So um, thank you so much, Aga. Um, it was my last day hosting, so it was a really pleasure and it was an honor to host such lovely lectures. Thank you very much. So um, now to end today's program, I'm going to put on the iPad. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم كن لوليك حجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا ناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه ارضك طوعا وتمتعه فيها طويلا برحمتك يا ارحم الراحمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله